all right everyone so in the last video uh, we have seen that how you can uniquely represent one single machine or one single any resources with ip address but uh, let's say you want to represent multiple resources together in a single notation so that's where you need to find little different mechanism and that's where the cidr notation comes in a picture okay so let's say this is like a virtual machine in your uh, google cloud platform and it has been assigned one ip address like 123.52.36.47 but instead of that now we have a multiple virtual machine and uh, for each of them i want to assign some ip address so something like this for first one this one for second one is this one third one this one and so on now you can see that uh, the first three numbers are exactly similar 123.52.36 but the last number is keep on changing so can we represent in a some way that only last numbers are changing remaining all things remain static so some kind of represent where some part is static and some parts are dynamic and this way the whole range of ip addresses we can represent it so let's go for it so in this particular case uh, you can have a look at 123.52.36 i just kept it as it is and with dot zero as my first ip address you can have a look at first three numbers are constant okay that means so oops yeah sorry actually i have to remove it i don't know how to yeah it is good okay so now you can see first three numbers are constant that means total 24 bits are constant and the last eight bit we can keep it dynamic so it can range from 0 to 255 so not just 0 to 11 different ip address but 0 to 255 different ip address it can represent so you can see 24 that means if you just separate it both of this thing by such a kind of slanted line which indicates that 24 bit first you keep it static and remaining 8 bit you make it variable okay that means in this way you can represent 255 or i would say 256 0 to 255 different ip addresses let's see few more example and you will get a better idea now cidr has a name like a classless inter domain routing let me go to one example and you will have a better idea let's go to our last example so you can have a look at let me just select this one okay so we have a 123.52.36.0 that is our base ip address and 24 so first 24 bit we will keep it constant so that is never going to change but last 8 bit that means the last number now through 8 bit definitely 256 different things you can do it in a binary that means uh, these numbers are variable in nature so it can go from 0 to 255 so you can see with just one single notation now you can represent 256 different ip address where only last numbers are changing remaining first three numbers are constant let's see a few more example and you will have a better idea let's say this one now earlier we keep on using like a 24 but now let's go ahead with a 28 so you'll have a better idea so what 28 indicates here 28 bits are fixed and our total length of ip address are 32 that means the four bits are variable that means with four bits total ip address you can represent like a 16 now instead of 28 if you go to slash 31 that means 31 bits are fixed one bit are variable but with slash 31 you can represent just the two ip addresses so bigger the number after this slanted line that means the lower number of ip address you can represent it with this cidr notation if you go to slash 32 that's like a very fixed thing 32 bits are fixed so definitely zero bits are variable and you can represent just one single ip address if you see the last one just slash zero that means the very lowest number that means zero bits are fixed everything is variable 32 bits are variable so all those ip address will be represented like a 4 billion 2 raised to 32 now if you see 
whenever you want to represent every single IP address on this planet in the context of IPv4, you can use this 0.0.0.0 slash 0 and throughout this whole course, many times we are going to use it. So don't worry about it. Okay, so that is the idea behind what is CIDR notation. Now, there are some protocols has been defined like a RFC 1918. I won't say that is like a protocol that is like a standard that how you can uh, do addressing in your private space in the context of this CIDR notation. So in the next video, we'll see about this standardization for private addressing RFC 1918.